their loved ones. Tonight we traveled to Salem, Oregon, the mental hospital there, made famous in the movies, where the remains of thousands of real-life patients who died there were never picked up, forgotten even by their own families. Oregon State Hospital in Salem, made famous by the 1975 movie One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. More than 30 years later, these are the dust-covered hallways where dozens of wheelchairs now sit idle. The tags with patients' names still hang from the armrests here, patients who have long since died. For nearly six decades, the patients who died here were cremated. Their remains stored in the basements of the hospital buildings here, many of which are no longer used. Today, 3,600 of those patients remain unclaimed. They are family members left behind. The canisters were stored in the basements of various buildings here. We found paper labels on some of them. However, most of them didn't have a label on. They were imprinted on the top with numbers. Numbers. All that is left to match the remains to aging medical records. And sadly, it is a picture mental health advocates say that is mirrored across this country. These kind of master books or maps get lost, and then all you're left with is a series of numbers, which just adds to the lack of dignity uh, that these people have. At Central State Hospital in Georgia, there are 25,000 graves with no names. In Danvers, Massachusetts, hundreds more. But in Oregon, there is a new law aiming to restore some of that lost dignity. It allows current generations, armed with as little as a loved one's birth date, to learn if their relatives' remains are here. The blanks on the shelves, right here, that would be a loved one who, who's been retrieved? Right, a family member would have come and climbed those remains. This number corresponds. Bill and Rita Snyder learned of the effort and wondered if Bill's two late uncles, who as a child his family rarely spoke of, could be here. They were. It was alarming, you know, to, to think that. That, 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 they, that they would be still sitting here somewhere in a basement. They've retrieved them and the medical records that said one uncle died from being an idiot, from feeble-mindedness. I think this is an opportunity to understand, I think, what is a piece of American mental health history that is both very sad and tragic. And to think that there are still more than 3,000 sitting here at the hospital. Mm -hmm. What can we do with them? How can we take care of them? Find their families. Find their families. One lawmaker said this new law is a chance to make amends, even if it is decades overdue. in Stockton trying to solve a century-old mystery. They are removing remains that were buried in the late 1800s. Now, the graveyard has no headstones, and there's no information on who these people were. Laura Kim is live in Stockton with why officials decided to remove those coffins now. Well, Pallas, it took about a year and a half since the discovery to secure the quarter of a million dollars and as well as the manpower for this monumental project. And as you can see, however, the last effort is now underway to unearth the secret path and the identity of the ten or so skeletal remains buried here. It was once a graveyard for Stockton State Hospital's mental patients. While coffins neatly lined up in rooms below, grave markers were never found. And till this day, the bones now being exhumed bear no name. We do have death ledgers from the hospital that show who passed away and when and why. And it may be that Pacific Legacy is able to find out some things about these remains and we can either match them to information on the ledgers. Making a match may come with the help of science. The bones will soon undergo a series of lab tests determining the gender, age, and perhaps the identities of patients buried here. They appear to be relatively intact, um, and there are shards of coffin around them. Shards not because they've been broken, but because the, the redwood coffins disintegrate. Among the bones, however, were other archaeological finds, a handmade shell bun, fragments of possibly an urn, all dating back to a certain place in time. This is a square coffin nail. You can see if you look at the end of it that it's square. These are typical of the 1800s, only used during that time period. This is a piece of glass that's called solarized glass. If you look at it, it's got a bit of an iridescent shimmer to it. Uh, that means it's more than 100 years old. But such is a grueling and delicate task, for archaeologists are using dental tools and small brushes. They're also working against the clock before the hot sun cements the moist dirt and locks in any more clues to this century-old mystery.
However, what is known right now is that instead of developing this land, it looks like a memorial will go up in its place, and there are also plans to uh, relocate the remains and give it a proper burial at a cemetery nearby. Back to you. Very interesting story for us. Thanks so much.